Patrick to my sister and only other living relative, Maine Dennis, at 3 Beekman Place, New York City. However, the Knickerbocker Bank is appointed trustee with sole authority. Oh, we don't need that part now. All we need is a safe haven. Oh, I've read about what happens after dark in New York to unmarried girls and innocent children. Your dear auntie must be worried, frantic. Saint Bridget deliver us to be.
here. I'm not sure I can stand it. I've been here two weeks and they've had 13 cocktail parties. <laughs> Only 13. She called one off. The bootlegger was sick that day. Oh, thank God you're here. Take these quick. Oh, well, boys' room very crowded. I put my ties in your room. Mr. Babcock! 
Knowledge is power. That's exactly what I'm here for, to discuss this youngster's education, his proper education. Yes, well, Now, I have here a list of better boys' schools in Manhattan. Well, personally, I prefer co-educational. What do you mean? That means when boys and girls go to the school. I know! <laughs> I know. Now, uh, first on my list is the Barclay School, which is known to be splendid. Yes, but have you ever considered a wonderfully progressive school down in the village? Your late brother was very explicit in his will. He said conservative schooling. Yes, but what Patrick needs... What the boy needs is stability, a school that is both exclusive and restricted. Exclusively what and restricted to whom? Want to keep the riffraff out of this lad's life. No, look here, Mr. Babbitt. Cop!
nothing the same cloth, in nothing the same tight rope as everywhere on the block. Young girl, you want to be as three-dimensional, swing up the line, to your toes. Whatever they say is like the unconventional, swing up the line, to your toes, and show them how to dance.
It's a car to me. I dropped my box to check on the boy's academic standard. What did I find? He isn't even registered. Never has been. So I've been hunting at every low, half-baked school for the feeble-minded in this town. And finally, I found him in the lowest of them all. There they were. A whole school room of them. Boys, girls, teachers, all romping around, stark naked. <laughs> Would you put your child in a place like that? I'm unmarried. What a dear Lindsay. What a lovely, lovely day. Oh, what a day it's right. I haven't even had a chance to call my office yet. What a Why, Mr. Babcock, what a surprise. You're no more fit to raise a child than Jezebel. Patrick, something's happened to my little love. Oh, no, get in here, you little heathen, you. He's been hiding in the kitchen. Oh, why, Patrick? What's wrong? We were just playing fish families. Fish families? Well, show me, darling. Well, Mrs. Devine and all the girls crouched down on the floor under the sunlight. And they pretended to be baby fishes, depositing their eggs in the sand. And Mr. Devine and all the boys do what gentlemen fish do. What could be more wholesome than natural? <laughs> natural? It might be natural for a sardine. Mr. Babcock, I consider your conduct most undignified. Well, at least I'm wearing a vest. Oh, I, I'm getting out of this combination nudist camp, opium den, before you make me look like the vice president in charge of free love. Mr. Babcock, please, not in front of the B.O. wall. Tomorrow morning, I, me personally, going to put this kid in boarding school, St. Boniface Academy, and he's going to stay here. Now, well, Mr. Van Cock, I'll do anything you say. Only please let the child stay near me. He goes, he goes tomorrow. But, Mr. Van Cock, let's be reasonable. No, no, I'm going to turn this kid into a decent, God fearing Christian if I have to break every bone in his body. <laughs> Are you having money by 8 o'clock shop? Oh, and kid, you'd better be wearing knickers. Never in the course. Oh, about 500 a week to start, wouldn't you say, Mr. 
and of course, go to the rain. I have only be a bit at the end of the last act. I accept. I accept. This isn't just charity, is it? I mean, you, you really do want me because of my talent. I want you. I want you. Oh, I can hardly wait to hear that overture. Vera, tell me about it. Well, it is terribly modern operetta about a lady astronomer. I have always wanted to be a lady astronomer. I'm a lady astronomer. <laughs> You're off stage right, waiting for your very exciting efforts at the most climactic moment of the show. You see, I teach in this girl's seminary, and I am in love with a professor in this man's
more like a beauty salon for madams. But why should not Simeon also be beautiful? Great <laughs> honor. Oui, madame. <laughs>
tell me, oh, I was just as bad at fingernails as I was selling. Yes, we need 
Ito had some money put by, and so did I, for a rainy day. But it can't get much wetter than it is right now. You are both so dear to me. I'll try and pay you back someday.
socially, decidedly top drawer. And by the way, you'll never guess who my roommate is here at Rome Sinews. You hit the jackpot, Dennis. Three more letters from your Auntie May. Pago Pago, Shanghai, Singapore. Send me the stamps when you're finished, will ya? Whatever happened to your cigar band collection, Nabla? I gave it up. Then I started smoking. <laughs> Oh, my own. 
Charles is the world's greatest luck. <laughs> Be 
the queen of Romania. <laughs> <laughs> Burnside, I think I know what you're suggesting I do. I just don't think that I could do anything so suggestive. Agnes, where is your spine? Here you've been living with me for all these years in the same house, and you still don't understand what I believe. Live, that's what I believe. Live? Yes, live life is a banquet. The most poor sons of bitches are starving to death. Live, 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 live! <laughs> I'm 
working on what? Chapter two. <laughs> chapter two? It took you six months to write chapter one. Well, I'll have you know Flaubert spent 13 years on Madame Bovary. How did she stand it? <laughs> that I was born jazz and turned immediately to the sexy mom. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies. Oh, Lindsay. I dropped by to see how my favorite author is Oh, swimmingly, Lindsay, swimmingly. Great. But why are you typing yourself? Oh, well, after Agnes left, I just couldn't face a new secretary. Well, I mean, all of this material is so intimate. <laughs> exactly. What had happened to Agnes? <laughs> we are not sure. You see, we sort of redesigned her, launched her, and except for one postcard, haven't heard a word in six months. She says, I'm trying to do everything you taught me, and it's from the Shangri-La Motel. <laughs> Baker Street, California. Hi, everybody. Jenny Dave, Uncle Lindsay, Nancy Vera. Hope you're not too busy. I've got some terribly important news. I hope it's gossip. It is. It's about me. I've got a girl. I suspected it. It's not just a girl. It's the girl. Her name is Gloria Upson, and you're going to meet her today. Oh, Patrick, I hope you didn't leave her sitting in the car. <laughs> I dropped her off at her girlfriend's on Park Avenue. She wanted to get spruced up before she met you. Oh, my, well, I better do some sprucing up on my own. I'll bring Gloria back in about 10 or 15 minutes, OK? I have my face all organized. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! It's the Queen of Romania. <laughs> oh, Miss dear, what happened? I opened a new window. <laughs> I wanted you to be the first to know. Oh no, there, there, Agnes. Everything is going to be all right. Do you think they all noticed? <laughs> Never mind about that. Now you come on over here, and I want you to tell me exactly everything that happened. I'll try. With my boots, resolutions for red, Mrs. Burnside, and my old inhibition shed, Mrs. Burnside, I did each little thing you said.
Patrick and I have been discussing this, and I'll make some arrangements for a place for Agnes to stay. I know a darling Jesuit priest who runs a fascinating home for fallen women. I do not consider Agnes fallen, on the contrary. Any man, don't tell me Agnes is going to live here. Well, I'll insist upon it. Where else could she go in her friendless condition? Eat off. Will you help our little mother up the stairs? You're befriending me? Hell yes. Why should the Jesuits have all the fun? <laughs>
Good Lord, warm them up for the wedding. Yeah. Wedding? Oh, I think mean, wedding's and it can spill the surprise. Well, she'll have to find out sooner or later. Oh, I but it was very good of you to keep me informed. Oh, and maybe I planned the most beautiful wedding. I'm already starting to cry. So am I. <laughs> Your Patrick and our little Chloe will be joined at the Church of the Heavenly Rest in East Mount Bay. Oh, you love it, baby. It's the most restricted community in our part of I'll get a blood test. <laughs> we haven't left you out of our plans, baby. Paul and I have the wedding present all figured out. We're going to get together, baby, you and me, and we're going to buy the kiddies that. What? Oh, that valuable lot right next door. Why, that dandelion patch is one of the choicest pieces of real estate in Mocha Bay. Well, you see, Mimi, this section is restricted only up to our property line. So we feel we have an obligation to make sure that the wrong people don't. But you know. We'll settle the kiddies in there, and at the same time, protect the whole neighborhood. Do everybody a favor. We'll buy it together, 50-50. Here's the escrow. Claude and Doris have already signed it. Just put down your John Hancock, and it's happily ever after. with Patrick for just a moment, please. What's your thing, maybe? Talk it all out. Just give us the high sign if you want another decorator. <laughs> oh! Uh, you don't happen to like gin, do you, maybe? Love it. After dinner, I'll get out the cards and we'll have a little game. I was going to tell you, Angie Maine, but things kept getting in the way. What things, Patrick? Well, I knew it would take you a while to get used to the opposites. Oh, are you used to them? Like the way they live, the way they think. Angie Maine, it's very simple. I'm in love. What the hell is this? <laughs> what you're in love with, what you're stuck with. Tuna fish, clam juice, and peanut butter for as long as you live, old Patrick. Is that what you want? Auntie Mame, I've been mixed up with a pretty crazy bunch of screws and nuts most of my life. <clears throat> I guess it didn't hurt me. But I damn well want to protect my little glory from people like that. You mean people like me? I didn't say that. I just rather my glory didn't know about a lot of things that ordinary decent human beings don't have to know about. Oh, so you want to spend the rest of your life in that restricted dandelion patch? With little Miss Schlitz's head. <laughs> forget it. Forget you ever met the Opsons, and forget you ever met me. Oh, Patrick. Patrick!
What the hell is Agnes doing here? Auntie May, you promised. Is Agnes? Agnes, I told you to stay in your room tonight. But it's calcium time, and my calcium pills are in the kitchen. Life's a little emergency. Oh, my God, they're here. I'll get it! Oh, no, you don't! <laughs> you don't approve of me. I'm not loved. You're loved, Agnes? My God, have you been loved? <laughs> Oh, everybody, I would 
secretary. She's a little bit well. She's not quite herself at the moment. Ah, now we know all about these women's things, don't we? Well, what's your name, Shia? Gooch. <laughs> you sit right here beside me, Mrs. Gooch. <laughs> <laughs>
like your aunt. She's your great aunt, Peter. She sure is. She's a big city guy to have. Boy, she knows a lot of it. All that you don't have to know, Dad. Are we going to let her spoil our son the same way she spoiled you? If she hadn't spoiled me, Pegeen, I'd be living in Mountiebank. And you'd be a bachelor, girl. So long to your the way your auntie may just taught you. Oh, very good, Saeed. Why are you rushing off, Annie May? Well done, was he part carry-on, darling? Peter, in Hindi that means the water oxen are waiting at the gate. Of course, our water ox is waiting at LaGuardia. TWA Flight 100 for New Delhi. What do you mean, our water ox? Oh, well, you see, Peter and I just had this beautiful idea. No! But the boy is deprived. <laughs> Why, he's never even ridden an elephant. Thank you, Auntie May. Penny Ball, please, please. It's just an India. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. I wouldn't hear of it. Dad? You heard your mother. <laughs> no church help us, Mom. You don't live, live, live. Life's a bit. Most of our sons are. One thing you've got to understand school starts the day after Labor Day. He's got to be back by then. Oh, but of course, of course, the next. Ready, Labor Day. <laughs> That's sometime in November, isn't it? <laughs> oh, Peter, what times we're going to have together. I just hope, though, that when your little boy is old enough to travel with your Auntie Maine, you won't be as antediluvian as your father. What's antediluvian? Peter, on the plane, I'll give you a pad and a pencil, and you can write down all the words you don't understand. She hasn't changed. She's a pie and paper. Do you know that I have been shopping all day for my traveling gear? Long pants. And this. Oh, me. Oh, my little lad. Your auntie name is going to unlock doors for you. What adventures we're going to have together. Open on you. Highway that's never been tried before. 
having just warmed our hearts up here. You've been so generous with your laughter and your applause, and we're going to ask you once more for some of some generosity out of you. This is a cause that has been started here in our, well, all over America. It's called Equity Fights AIDS. And in the old days, we all used to give each other presents and flowers and all that kind of stuff on opening night. But now we don't do that anymore because we all donate to this very worthwhile cause. And as you filter out of the theater, you'll find some of our cast members out there in the lobby with baskets. And what we're asking is for you, if you find it in your hearts, to give us a dollar or two or even change. Every little bit helps. So we want to thank you and God bless you. Good night.